This video is about this bottle air vent that's designed to automatically release uh, air trapped in that sort of closed loop heating type systems. But the video starts because I bought it while I was getting some other stuff and notably this plastic push fit plumbing medium. Now, I'm used to using copper and I've always, you know, copper has been my preferred plumbing type system with what are called compression fittings where you basically put the pipe in, tighten this up and inside this is an olive, uh, a metal ring that as you tighten it up, because of its shape, it's crushed on. It's almost like crimped onto the pipe and it forms a very tight seal. And as long as you uh, use clean copper with no burrs or scuffs in it, it, it's very good. Now, I have to say, when I was young and inexperienced, I used to uh, clean it in a uh, copper cleaner that was actually designed for soldering pipes. What I didn't realise was that as you screwed it around in that, it grooved it. But as you, more importantly, when you pulled it out, it left lo lots of long ways grooves. And it meant that when you tightened it up in here, there were lots of long ways, tiny little grooves for water. And initially, when you pressurise the system, you'd get a tiny quantity of water would just ooze for quite some time before impurities had filled those up. But I found that later on that yeah, when you're cleaning this, it's better to use a very fine sort of abrasive, if at all, and only spin it round like that and then take it off and not drag it through anything. But that, that's just learning experience. However, my faith in copper was shattered in this place when I discovered that the pipework in this building, which is quite old, has impurities. Uh, people thought, people gave various, various reasons. They said it might be because of a failed electrode uh, sort of galvanic electrode in the water heater, but there is no system like that here. It was the main cold water line coming into the building, and there's a possibility it was flux contamination. But the gist is that I discovered that one of the pipes in the building was leaking. A tiny little pinhole appeared, and when I opened a section of the pipe up, I saw that there were lots of little corrosion pits all over the inside. So I decided, well, okay, time to replace this pipe work. It's not going to be that complicated. And since everybody was recommending plastic, I went for the plastic. Now, one of the nice things about the plastic is that it's very easy to cut. Now, this is using a compression system. Literally, to terminate this, you get your pipe, you cut it to length, and notable in this system, it's just really a guide more than anything else. You get these marks, and the idea is that if you cut it on one of those marks with a standard pipe slicer, then the spacing to the next mark is how much it has to go into the fitting, and that just shows you that it has gone in fully. But the idea is you put an insert inside to support it. You have to use an insert in the plastic pipe. Uh, that's a common early cause of failures of this system. And then when you push this in here, it's got this outer ring with sort of fingers and little steel inserts that actually grip onto the pipe. And because of the way it's designed, and there's also O-rings for sealing in there. Because of the way it's designed, when you push this in and any pressure is applied on the outside or as it's tightened up, it grips tighter and tighter. Those little metal teeth bite harder into that pipe and it can be used for plastic or copper. So this insert has the... Uh, it's, got, it's a more expensive insert, if you will. It's not that more expensive, but it's got the added advantage of an internal seal as well as the seal on the end. Then there's another O-ring up the end here. And all you have to do to terminate the pipe, keep in mind where I cut it, there's another mark here. All you have to do is push it in until that line goes up to the end and that shows it's been pushed in fully. And if I was to try pulling that out now, it, you can see that as this pulls out, it seems to grip tighter and tighter. But there's also the added uh, feature that you can turn this and it super locks it in and then at that point you're just not going to get that out and initially I was thinking really I'd, I'd be so worried about using that in mains water pressure but then there are videos on the internet I, I shall link one down below ultimate handyman I think it is where the guy pressurizes this to see at what point it fails and it's massive the pressure the pressure it fails is ridiculous it's like hundreds and hundreds of pounds a square inch till it finally uh, gives and in many other videos when they're pressurising it, it splits the actual plastic pipe and it's fairly thick. It's a sort of multi-laminated sort of layer. So they do seem quite good. The advantage of this one is that you can loosen this off and you can pull this ring in and you can pull this out. But noting that every time you do that, it leaves that little insert in there. 
And they recommend just grabbing that, the pair of long nose pliers, and hiking it out. I'm not sure how many times, this is another thing, this little insert pops out every time I've tried that. This is my, uh, this is my play piece, that's why there's a wee red dot there just to mark, this is the bit I've been playing with quite a lot, because uh, I probably won't end up using it, because uh, just as a precaution, because it's not fresh, shall we say. But the idea is that to basically, you can put a copper pipe in there as well, noting, and here is uh, something I noticed, that the biggest issue with these has been people who have been hacking this off with a hacksaw or junior hacksaw and leaving the end all rough. You're supposed to file the end or reamer it to make sure it's smooth so it doesn't damage the o-ring. And it's very clear that in some of them that they've pushed it in with rags and it's damaged the o-ring. And then it's when they've uh, pressurized it, that damaged the o-ring is where the water has leaked out. But once you tighten that up, that's pretty solid. And likewise, just Basically, when you're you're doing this stuff, you're basically you just ram it in until it goes up to that mark, tighten up, and that's you made your solid connection. Impressive. Other videos showed uh, a water test. They basically got bits of pipe and they filled them with water and they put an end cap on both ends. They did it with the plastic versions. They did it with copper. Copper was the only one that failed. The plastic ones, the plastic actually gave slightly, expanded with the ice, and then when it defrosted again, it was all right. Copper was the only one that split. It's tricky. Um, elements, I'm so used to copper that, you know, there's that element of doubt that you're thinking, is it really going to hold? Have you guys been using stuff like this? Have you ever had problems? I'm interested to know. The other uh, thing I noticed was that if you unlock this and you take the copper pipe out, by pulling this ring in and then sliding the copper out. You can see where the teeth have bit into it, but also, as you pull it out, it does leave those slight scratches up there, so I'd say that there's a possibility that that might defeat the O-ring. And if you are, if you do remove this one of these fittings from copper, it may be worth actually polishing the end up a bit or uh, actually cutting just half an inch or so off that so you get a nice fresh bit of copper to actually bite onto when you reinstall it. Other than that, it seems quite good. And they do them in a whole range of these fittings. This is the uh, JG Speedfit system. How how much of a distraction you get from the main subject, which is this. That's the whole point of this video. But uh, this is just the same. It's like these three bits with the three ports with the same system so that you can just make basically tee off. It's very neat. I am going to have a play with it. There is an element of fear of playing with something that can flood your house out, but fortunately all the pipes are under the, under the floor. But the main subject of this video, when I'm finally getting to it, is this. So this is a device that's designed to mount on, say for instance, heating loops, where you've got water flowing in a loop, and if air gets into it, or is created by chemical reactions within the loop, it's helpful to have it vent out. And this system has a little valve in it that allows the air to leak out but blocks the water. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at this. And I think, to be honest, uh, we're going to have to zoom up on this. So I shall bring in, as my height reference, I shall bring in the, the trumpy brick and we'll zoom down. And then I'll flip that over so there's no distractions. And we'll put that here. So when you open this up, You find inside there's a little float. This bit here is just the brass cup. So there's a little float and a valve. If I unscrew this, uh, it's notable that this is the valve that the air release comes out, but if you screw it down tightly, no air will come out at all. So you have to just back it off slightly. And I think the point of that is that if it ever gives problems, if it ever leaks, you can just screw it up once you finish with it. If you wanted to just let the air vent once, or if you want to leave it on an ongoing basis and it does somehow end up seeping water, you've got the option of tightening that up and it will stop that. Once you uh, take this off, you find that after the brass cap is removed, you've got the uh, float here and a little valve. Now, if I slide the out, the float out, which comes out quite easily, and we look at this, there's the O-ring that seals onto this a copper, the brass cup itself. Looking at this initially, you can see at this end, there's, uh, I'm going to take this out, in fact, that's the best bet. If I remove this little spring hinge, you'll see there's the port that the air escapes from, and directly under it is a little silicon rubber 
pad there that press against that. But note that the hinge doesn't actually, although it's at the directly at the pivot point, it really is in line with the sort of hinge. The hinge itself is this sort of spring, and it goes down and it sort of loops under that and grips on so it holds it very tightly. But it kind of, it's very hard to describe because it's not like it's, it does pivot up like that, but not in the sense that there's actually a pivot wire going right through the actual plunger here. It's very odd how they've done this. I'm trying to work out why they've done that. So if I hook this back on, now you see that that wire is not going right through and that although it's pivoting at that point, the effectively this cap can actually be pulled directly away from the air point. But the gist is that there's that little rubber cap is if this is the airport that the air is going to escape from and this is the rubber cap, it's kind of just pressing up against that. But as it hinges down, it kind of angles and just opens that tiny little air channel. It's very strange the way we've done that. There must be a reason. I'm guessing it's so that the natural position of that is closed. Odd. The float, I thought, might push that up hard against that, but it doesn't. Um, when The float can be put in quite easily, like this. It just sits in here, and then once you've actually screwed it down into the thing, it can't really escape, actually. I think I put that in the wrong way around. I think it goes in that way around. And once it's uh, in there, it can escape from that. But when the float is up fully, you'd think with the liquid, it doesn't actually... It bottoms out, it hits the back of that plate before it's applying any pressure towards the valve. So it relies purely on the spring pressure to hold that valve in position. I'm guessing maybe that's just to make it super sensitive to the lightest pressure. Not sure. And it may rely on the pressure of the water trying to get through that hole to actually basically push this cap into place. But the gist is that if uh, air does get into your system and this little plunger drops, it opens that valve, the air squirts out the top, but only if you've got it partially unscrewed. There are holes in either side of this little brass cap. But if you, there's also a little plunger in there that goes down into here and forms a sort of conical seal. So if it's fully closed like that, no air will escape. But if you just nudge it back a tiny little bit, uh, it will allow that air to escape. And as soon as the water starts flowing up into this, it then takes the weight off that stopcock, that sort of float. And uh, then the pressure of the valve alone, the spring pressure, will hold it in place. And I guess the pressure of water trying to get through that hole will then push that firmly against that and stop it flowing. It's worth mentioning that uh, you have to be careful where you put these in systems because if you put this too close to the inlet to the pump, so it's actually drawing a slight vacuum in that part of the heating system, uh, it can actually pull air down this and actually, it, instead of letting air out the system, it lets it bleed into the system. So it has to be on the side of the pump that's sort of under pressure um, and so it can actually apply that pressure to force the air out and... Uh, and block the valve with the water pressure without pulling any air in. But um, while also checking this up on the internet, uh, if there were any other options, other variants, I found that you get various different caps. One of the caps was a sort of designed to protect, protect against that, where one of these had been installed in the wrong place and was drawing air in. It had a facility, it had a little spring-loaded valve here that would let air out, but it would stop the air being drawn in. There were other ones that, because of the way this works, occasionally a little bit of water will spurt out. If the air escapes, you'll get a little bit of water will squirt out before it fully closes. Uh, you get systems that have uh, hygroscopic washers inside that if they get wet, they'll actually expand up and close that. Um, and then as they dry off again, they'll just let a bit more air out and they'll just gradually regulate it out without letting any water spray out. Very interesting system. Very simple, not that hugely expensive either. And uh, it goes together quite simply and can be opened, although I have to say, if you ever get the urge to open one of these, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend draining the water down first, uh, just in case it is under pressure and uh, it squirts lots of water out. Just make sure I've got this right. When you actually uh, screw the lid on, the whole insert inside rotates with it. until it, that o-ring seals. 
So there we go. A random selection of plumbing type devices. I should mention this pipe. It's interesting that it's kind of flexed, but comes in coils. You can actually see, I don't know if you can see that. Let's zoom down and see if you can see it. Can you see the blue line there? It's actually a multiple lamination. Um, there is a name, PEX. I'm not sure what that stands for, but uh, it hints that there's some sort of, they call it a barrier pipe. And I'm guessing that this is maybe some sort of part of the barrier that by using multiple layers of plastic, they've got the strength of the main plastic, which might be oxygen permeable. But the blue inner layer uh, kind of prevents that. It uh, provides a barrier against the flow of air into the into the water inside and maybe closed loop systems. I mean, the same stuff is used in sort of heating, underfloor heating systems as well as sort of cold, cold and hot water supplies. It's very interesting. I'm going to have to play with it and see if I can get the courage, the confidence in these compression fittings because... Uh, yeah, mixed thoughts about that, but I think done properly, given its history and it's been around a long time. And what I've read on the internet, I think it probably is quite a sound system. It just seems almost too easy, if you know what I mean. It just seems too simple. But it's certainly going to be fun to experiment with. <laughs>